Sons and daughters of God, may his grace, mercy, and peace be with you, and may he put a new song in your heart, as you know your salvation is sure. Amen. Whistle well you work. I'm almost tempted to sing it. I love that uh, tune that was uh, one of the main songs in the, the, well, great, now I'm going to try that again, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I'm sure many of you have heard it, many of you have sang it, maybe even, many of you probably know that there's more than one line to this song. Personally, I just, as I whistle it, I whistle the same line over and over, probably getting old to anybody who's listening. But anyhow, as we hear that song, we think about the fact that God has given us an opportunity to work and to do so joyfully. What an opportunity we have to praise him in what we do and what we say. And this is not Disney's idea, by the way. We can go back to Ecclesiastes, where Solomon actually wrote, So I saw that there is nothing better for a man than to enjoy his work, because that is his lot. Enjoy your work. Take pleasure in what God has placed before you. Take joy in what he has given you. But not just that. Saul, Saul Paul was getting at something more important here today, wasn't he? Not just about praising God when you, when you work, which is, of course, is important. To take pleasure when you, as a mother or as a father caring for your kids. To take pleasure as a, as a grandparent giving good advice to your grandchildren. To take pleasure in taking care of your family. But even beyond that, Paul said, take pleasure in everything. Take joy in everything. Have gladness in everything. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In everything. In everything, give thanks to the Lord. In everything, praise the Lord. In everything, bring joy before the Lord. Sounds easier said than done, doesn't it? Well, a lot of times we like to, we don't mind singing hymns. We don't mind praying psalms. We don't mind singing those spiritual songs in church, but outside of church, come on now. Greeting one another with psalms, have any of you guys done that recently? Walked up to a friend in Christ and greeted them with a psalm. Maybe one or two of us have said, the Lord be with you and also with you. And those that we are speaking in psalms, but even more than that, the Lord has called us to come to him in joy and gladness. Paul, as he's writing here, does not tell us to only when we're happy or only when things are going our way, only when life seems to be going the way we want it to and when it's fair, but in all things, in all things, praise the Lord. Wow. Praise the Lord when it's time to pay the car bill. Praise the Lord when you come back from that relaxing vacation and you know that you have to stop at work. Praise the Lord when you get that diagnosis from the doctor that you weren't expecting. Praise the Lord when things in life just don't seem to be going your way. Wow. Those are hard words to hear from Paul because we, we're, we're comfortable praising the Lord when things are going our way. When we get a raise, for instance, or when, when the, our day is going well. Those are the easy days to praise the Lord, aren't they? But the, Paul says praise the Lord in all circumstances. Praise the Lord even in the worst of times. And sometimes it is hard to do that. Sometimes it's hard to look and praise the Lord and to find joy in the Lord because we are so caught up in this world. We're so caught up in the walk of this world. See, right before Paul gets at this command to us to greet one another in psalms, to, to sing together with, the so, with songs of praise, he says first, walk. Walk as children of the light. Walk in the way of the Lord. But he doesn't say walk, and it's going to be perfect. He doesn't say walk, and it's going to go as, as you always expect it to. He doesn't say walk, and you're never going to feel pain or sadness. But he says walk in the Lord. Walk in the light of the Lord, and there will be joy. And what does it mean to find joy in the Lord? Well, it means something more than what our world has to say about joy. Because where is joy centered when we talk about joy in the world? Where is joy centered when we talk about the offerings and the pleasures of this life? It's centered on me. It's centered on my, what I want. It's centered on who I am. It's centered on these passing fads, on these empty things. It's centered on getting rich quick or greener pastures on the other side. It's centered on a life of comfort. But that's not where joy is centered in Scripture, is it? I challenge you to go to Scripture and to look at all the times joy is used in Scripture. It's going to take you a while, so make sure you set aside a little time to do so. But as you go through, you'll notice that there's one thing common in every time that joy comes about, that it starts with God. 
Scriptural joy, biblical joy starts with our Lord and our Savior. It starts with the knowledge of the truth. It starts with knowing with full certainty that our God in heaven has come down to this earth, has given his life for us, has sacrificed himself, and has redeemed us. That is the joy that we have as Christian men and women. That is the joy and the promise that we have to walk each day. It is not a passing fad. It is not a hope. Well, an empty hope anyway. But it is a true hope and assurance. It is a true joy of knowing, knowing that our Savior has prepared a place for us. A place for us to go when this life is over. A place to go when we will be with Him forever. That is the joy that our, our Lord has given us. A joy for each day. But it's hard to find that joy. It's hard to sing those songs sometimes because sometimes we tune it out. What about you in your life? What types of things rob you of your joy? What types of things steal that joy from you? What are those joy suckers that you have? When are those days that you can sing with joy? When are those days when you can only sing the blues? When are those days when you don't feel like you'll ever sing again? In each of those times, God is with you, though. In each of those times, his holy word is there as your guide. The psalmist says in 119, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And when we walk that path with the Lord, when we walk that way with the Lord, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be everything we had imagined it be. But it is a walk that is joyful. It is a walk that is not focused on us, but focused on him. Of not a, lo- a walk that is not focused on the temporary, on the now, but a walk that is focused on the time when we will sit with him in that banquet feast which has no end. Now in the world though, in the world there's so many different voices we hear. There are so many different voices that, that, we, that we tend to tune out God. Even as Christian men and women, we know, we know this joy, we know this promise of joy, but we, we tune him out. We tune him out because there's such a cacophony of other voices out there. There's such a loud voices shouting here and there, not like the chorus of angels who sing to God in great joy, but a voice here and a voice there challenging us, calling us, leading us away from God. You've heard those voices. I'm not talking about the voices in your head. I'm talking about those voices, though of the world that are challenging you, to, uh, to calling you away from God. Those voices that are calling you to to live how you want to live. Those voices that call to beauty, the shiny things of life. The voices that call to comfort, the relaxing, empty things of life. Those voices that call to power, to glory, instead of pointing us to power and glory found in our Savior. We know these voices because we've heard them. Sadly, time and again, we hear these voices calling to us. But these are not the voices just of the world, but these are the voices coming from the father of lies, Satan himself. Because Satan will do anything he can to lead us away from God. He'll do anything he can to rob us from the joy that we have in our Savior. He'll do anything he can to lead us to death and ultimately to hell. Because that is ultimately his goal. To destroy our faith and to destroy our joy in the Lord. To destroy the peace and promise that we have. His goal is to destroy that and to tear us away from God. And it may seem... Like those voices don't, aren't so bad. It may seem like those voices are just, well, it's a little slip up here, a little pleasure there. But those little things, that's how Satan works over time. Those little things turn into big things. They snowball until they're out of our control. In Greek mythology, you may have heard of what is called the, the siren song. The sirens in Greek mythology were these half-woman, half-bird Beasts that were devious and wicked. See, they would sing a beautiful song. A beautiful music to the ears of sailors, to the beautiful music to the ears of men. And it would allow these sirens to make the whoever heard their song do whatever they wanted. But they were dangerous. They were devious. Their songs led many a sailor to rocky shores to shipwreck. And while the siren song is a myth, a Greek myth, it is very true for the words that come from our world, from the songs that we hear sung in our world. It is very true of the cacophony of voices in our world because those words, they may sound beautiful, they may drip with sweetness of honey, but ultimately they lead to emptiness, brokenness, and death. Ultimately they rob us of the comfort and joy we have in the Lord. 
ultimately they leave us dead. There's only one promise. There's only one joy that can give us life. There's only one joy that comes from our Lord. And that is the joy of our salvation. That is the joy of knowing the grace and mercy that God had on each one of us. The grace and mercy that He had on each one of us as He called us in our baptism. That is the joy of knowing that despite the fact that we were poor, miserable sinners, God chose us. And He continues to call to us. Even as those voices of the world get louder and it's hard to tune Him in, He continues to call to us. He continues to call to us and call us back to Him. Calling us to repentance. Calling us to forgiveness. He continues to call a world that is dead to sin to Himself. Inviting them to hear the sweet message of the Gospel. To know that sweet promise of joy. That joy that we have. That joy that we have in knowing that our sins are forgiven. There's an old old hymn that probably many of you know. It didn't make it into our hymn book here, but I'm sure many of you know it. And it goes a little something like this. Calling you and calling me. Calling us sinners to come home. Come home. Come home. Those words, well written originally, were written in, written in referring to the promise of coming home to, to salvation. I think those apply to the promises He gives us in this life as well. Come home to me. Come home and be filled up and have your, your joy and strength renewed. Come home to me. Hear my word. Hear my word again. And may it be that strength you need. Come home. And let me fill you when you've been emptied out by this world. Come home. And find that true joy again. That true joy that I gave you at first at your baptism. Come home. Come home and be full. So that is the promise of our Lord. That is the joy that we have in our Lord. The joy that it is not what we do, but it is through Him who comes to us. He gives us His Word not to set aside, not as a practical book, well, actually rather, but as a guide to lead us through this life. He gives us His Holy Word so that we can see, hear His voice amidst the, the voices of this world, so that we can hear His voice to us, calling us sinners to come home. And I know for some of you, it's a hard prospect. It's a hard prospect to think about the fact that, that He's calling us to this joy. But when we turn to His Word, when we turn to His comfort in Scripture, we see that no matter who you are, no matter where you are in this life, that that call is just as true for you as it is for someone who's been in the church all their life. That, tr that, tr that call to you to know joy, to know peace, that comes from God, from His Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. As you think about it, think about those things in your life that rob you of joy. I doubt that any of them, or I know that none of them come from Scripture, from God's Word. But think about those things that bring you true joy in this life. Think about those things that do bring you joy, that bring you through the times that are difficult. And I guarantee that every one of them comes from God's Word from His leadership and His guidance. Because as it is that we can find true joy as we walk through this life, as we hear His Word and as we obey His Word. As we walk through this life and we follow the plan that He has laid out for us. Now again, those are voices that are out there. They're, they're loud. But His voice is always true. It is always sure. His voice is always that voice calling us to come to Him. And His voice is one that calls us to joy. So seek the joy of the Lord. Seek the joy of the Lord in those psalms and those hymns. Seek the joy in those spiritual songs. And be, be ready and willing to greet one another with those psalms, with those spiritual songs and hymns. Be ready and willing to share that joy that God has given you. To share that joy as we walk as children of the light. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we give thanks to you that even amidst the many voices we hear in the world today, that your voice is still stronger, that your voice is greater, and that you have called us to you. Lord, help us to, to never turn from you, but to always to seek your paths. Help us to know that the only way we can find true joy is through you. And Lord, help us to see 
so many people who do not have your joy. Help us to see beyond ourselves and beyond our lives that there are so many people in this world today who need your joy, who need your comfort and need your forgiveness. Help us to bring to them your grace, your promise of forgiveness. Lead us and guide us. May your word indeed be a path to our feet and may it be a light for our walk that we may walk with you each and every day. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord who has given us his true joy. Amen.